Hi everybody. This video is going to briefly introduce volume two of Emma. So what I'm going to do in this video is just briefly run through some of the guiding questions for volume two. The first question I want you to consider as you read volume two has to do with Emma's tendency to misread people and let her imagination kind of run wild. Uh, in Volume 1, we saw Emma misread Mr. Elton's behavior on several, on several occasions. Uh, for example, she misread uh, his interest in the portrait that he paint she painted of Harriet. He misread the... Uh, she misread the, um, the verse that he wrote that they had to sort of make sense of. Uh, and she misread a lot of his attention and a lot of... Uh, the compliments that he gave to Harriet as him being interested in Harriet. Uh, and of course, now that we've finished volume one, we know that that was wrong. So first of all, I want you to consider uh, if she learned anything from her mistake with Mr. Elton. Uh, and if so, sort of what did she learn and how did she try to change her behavior? And then in addition to that, um, do we see any evidence that she might be reading people again in volume two? or any evidence that once again she might be letting her imagination sort of run away with her. The second question I want you to consider has to do with um, Emma's attitude towards Jane Fairfax. Last week we talked a little bit about Jane Fairfax situation, but we didn't, um, we, in volume one we don't really see hardly any interactions um, between her and any characters. However, in volume two, Jane Fairfax becomes a much more central character. So I want you to try to figure out what Emma's attitude towards Jane Fairfax is, um, how she sort of feels about Jane Fairfax, um, how she treats Jane Fairfax. And then I also want you to try to, at the best of your ability, identify what aspects of Jane. So whether that's her history, um, her accomplishments, or certain aspects of her character, motivates Emma's attitude towards her. So what's sort of behind Emma's treatment of Jane and Emma's attitude towards Jane. Uh, and along with that, I also want you to pay attention to um, Mr. Knightley's attitude towards Jane Fairfax and think about how Mr. Knightley's attitude towards Jane Fairfax and treatment of Jane Fairfax differs from Emma's attitude and treatment of Jane Fairfax. And then the last character I want you to pay attention to uh, is the character of French Churchill. So like Jane Fairfax, in Volume 1 we hear about Frank Churchill, um, but we don't really see a lot of Jane, of Frank Churchill. But in Volume 2, Frank Churchill becomes a much more central character. So first of all, I want you to just um, think about how you would describe Frank Churchill as a character. Uh, and, and as a starting point for that, um, begin thinking about, you know, maybe what characters in uh, what other characters in Austin's fiction he's similar to. So would you think of him as being similar to Mr. Darcy? Uh, would you think of him as being similar to Mr. Bingley? Uh, or would you think of him as being similar to Mr. maybe Mr. Wickham? And then sort of what about him makes him sort of similar to or different from those other characters? And then I also want you to pay attention to Mr. Knightley's opinion of Frank Churchill. So try to identify, um, you know, what Mr. Knightley thinks of Frank Churchill and then what sort of reasons he gives for his opinions of Frank Churchill. If you have any questions about these questions um, or about volume two in general, uh, please feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing what you think in the discussion for this week.